afternoon with your CIG TV News Update. I'm Donna Bush. Glad you could join us. 140 students are recipients of government scholarships, and on Thursday evening, a Celebration of Scholars event was held in their honor. The scholarship fund is a funding scheme, basically, where the Cayman Islands government provides scholarships and grants for Caymanian students studying local and overseas. And it is for their first degree, it can be for their postgraduate, and even A-levels. We actually spend, it probably costs us about $14 million to educate all of our students for the, for the year. That's local and overseas. Our minister felt that it was really important for us to celebrate this accomplishment of our students and to give them a good send-off and show them that, you know, we're very proud of them and we are here to support them throughout their studies. This event would definitely provide uh, network opportunities for our students. We've also invited our, some of our panelists who did their interviews for the students and so that they can see you know, who was successful as well as again connect with those persons in the field that they're going to be studying in and you know, make those network connections for future internships and possibly job employment when they complete their studies. I would encourage every Caymanian student to apply for a scholarship. This is an awesome opportunity for you to further your education. There's very few regions and countries who will provide funding, which is not a loan, so it's not that we're loaning you and we ask you to repay it. Your repayment would be returning to the Cayman community and giving back through employment and service and so forth. So, I mean, I think it's just, in this day and age where education is really key, if you want to be competitive in the world that we are living in, especially in Cayman, which is international and mostly diverse, you have to have qualifications, you have to have you know, a training and so forth. So it's definitely an opportunity that I encourage children to take a hold of. Um, even if for those who may not, if they're not sure, still put in your applications because at the end of the day, if you get accepted and you have the application in, then you can, you know, you know you have funding secured. Those in attendance also heard from education counselors, Mrs. Barbara Connolly, and head of the education council, Mr. Danny Scott. I know that you all must be very excited, but also a little nervous. And that is to be expected as you take the next step in your academic journey. You'll work hard to get to this point, and that hard work must continue at university. Of course, you have permission to have a little fun, but I urge you to find the balance and always put your studies first. To students, parents, sponsors, mentors, congratulations. Um, the success that you've achieved to date, I know loads of people are responsible for, and I thank you all for the support that you give to these young people. The other thing I'd like to say is to each of you as students, you've done very well and we are very proud of you. Well done. Bear in mind as you go forward, continue to invest in yourself even as others are investing in you. It is down to you. And I suppose the bottom line on this is remember one thing, Better begins with you. And we say congratulations to all of the government scholarship recipients. In other headlines, the Cayman Islands Health Services Authority is enhancing its blood diseases and cancer care services with the recruitment of a full-time medical hematologist oncologist. Dr. Lundy Richards, consultant medical hematologist oncologist, has history with the HSA, having been contracted part-time over a few years ago before joining the organization's pathology laboratory and oncology teams full-time back in August. Now, the addition of a specialist with the ability to diagnose and treat blood cancers and blood disorders, such as anemia and bleeding conditions like hemophilia, as well as solid cancers, has made comprehensive cancer care for people in the Cayman Islands more easily accessible, closer to home. In addition to hematology and oncology services, he will provide expertise in blood bank and transfusion medicine. Dr. Richard says he's honored to work with a team of professionals at the HSA, and they will work towards strengthening the healthcare system of the Cayman Islands by always putting patients first. Dr. Richards received his medical degree in Cuba, graduating with a gold seal diploma, first class honors. He completed his doctor of medicine in clinical hematology and oncology 
at the University of the West Indies, Jamaica. Now, patients will need a referral for hematology and oncology services provided by Dr. Richards. For more information, you can call the chemotherapy unit at 244-2872. That's 244-2872. Finally, Laura Panetes, LLM course leader at the Truman Bodden Law School, recently presented her research on Cayman Islands law at an international conference held in Hong Kong, China. The three-day conference was called Unpacking the Complexity of Regulatory Governance in a Globalizing World and focused on good governance and compliance in complex reg regulatory environments. Ms. Panetes research uh, analyzes Cayman's new public procurement law, the law of public purchases, it discusses the current state of play, pointing out positive developments as well as the next stages necessary to achieve a world-class system. The research also features the results of interviews conducted with main public procurement stakeholders here in Cayman. The event was organized by the Chinese University of Hong Kong, a prominent and quickly growing Chinese tertiary institution, and the European Consor Consortium for P a Political Research an academic network focusing on teaching and research into politics and international relations comprising 350 institutions across 50 countries. Now, the paper has now been accepted for publication in a top international journal and will be released next month. All right, that's it, folks. I'm Donna Bush thanking you for joining us, wishing you a wonderful and, of course, a very, very safe weekend and hoping you'll join me back here again on Monday. Until then, bye-bye for now. water sports in the Cayman Islands are great, but keep a cool head. Here are seven tips for fun and safe sea outings. Number one, use a checklist to plan your outing. Check the weather forecast, make a float plan, and share it with someone who is remaining on land, stating where you're going, with whom, and when you're expected to return. Visit your nearest marine supply store to get your safety gear. This includes signaling mirrors, whistles, and a flare kit. It's also very important to have onboard flotation devices and life vests for each person. There are different types of vests. Some are for water sport activities such as snorkeling and others are for going on offshore boating or on fishing trips. Number two, these items can be lifesavers in case of an accident or bad weather. Number three, use a motor kill switch, especially if you're boating alone. In case of a leak or breakdown, always stay with the boat until help arrives. If you capsize, an emergency beacon or locator device can send a distress signal to inform the authorities of your location. Larger flares will indicate distress to a boat, airplane, or search and rescue officials. Number four. In addition to sunscreen, food, and beverages, it would be smart to have a cell phone. Make sure your marine radio works, Cayman boaters use channel 16 to communicate. Number five. Also, don't forget your anchor and sufficient rope. Number six. Boat operators should be familiar with the local waters and reefs, as well as the capabilities and functions of the vessels they are using. Always obey the rules of the sea and the marine environment and have courtesy for others. Number seven. Alcohol and salt water do not mix especially if you're the captain. Some useful contact numbers are 911. The RCIPS Marine Base is 649-7710 and the Port Authority is 949-2055. Smooth sailing all.